It's one fight night 16. Uh, start with the main event: Jonathan Haggerty versus Fabricio De Andrade. Um, Andrade is the mixed martial arts champion uh, on the on the right there. Haggerty is the Muay Thai champion, uh, and they are fighting for the kickboxing world championship. So neither guy is going to lose their belt in their sport, um, and one of them is beginning a, is going to become a two sport champion, and. When they announced this, everyone's like, Haggerty's going to kill him. He's the Muay Thai guy. Andrade is a, a, a mixed martial arts guy. That doesn't usually work out, especially because it is, um, you know, it's a striking match. Um, Didn't Haggerty uh, fight like one month ago? I feel like we just talked about this. <laughs> I mean, he he beat uh, Nango. When was that? That was in April. That seems like it was so much more recent than that. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. Um yeah, that's wild. But yeah, he fought Nango and starched him. It was crazy. He just blitzed him, dropped him like three times back to back to back. It was it was crazy. Um, so yeah, when this was announced, it was like, it's the MMA guy versus the Muay Thai guy, but it's kickboxing. So the Muay Thai guy is probably going to smoke him. But then everyone's like, don't forget, Andrade had a pretty solid kickboxing career before he was an MMA fighter. It's just been a while. Um, so it was a little interesting. Fight starts. Um, Haggerty immediately is just kicking. Constant kicks. Uh, high kicks, low kicks, body kicks. Um, Andrade, is, Andrade is trying to land his low kick, and he does land it a couple times. Here's a good one where he, you could tell some guys when they throw leg kicks, it's kind of lazy. It's almost like a slap. Mm-hmm. But then there's some guys who fully turn their hips almost downward as they bring the leg over, and it's just like it's like swinging a baseball bat against someone's leg. You hear and Andrade, the mm-hmm. Yeah, and Andrade was landing good leg kicks, but I mean, Haggerty's a Muay Thai guy. You know, he, he's. Uh, used to it he's used to it um genevieve says uh, honestly overall i wasn't wowed by this card it wasn't bad it just wasn't that exciting yeah there were some matchups that were kind of kind of whatever um and like i said we're only going to cover two of them um this fight uh once we let's let's actually keep it right here at this picture um because this was in the second round the first round was andrade's walking haggerty down kind of but he's kind of getting lit up a little bit he's trying to land the low kick he's not really landing much of anything else Haggerty's mixing in elbows, uh, you know, knees. Uh, Andrade's landing good knees to the body, but Haggerty's just mixing in all these different weapons. Uh, and you can really see, like, man, this guy is, he's a pure striker. You know, mm-hmm. this is, it's a little different. Second round, uh, he throws this cool, he almost like reaches forward and faints like he's going to throw a knee up the middle, but then ha- brings it back down. And as Andrade is kind of stepping back and drops his hands a little bit to block a knee to the body, he brings that knee down and then throws that same side for the high kick and he just barely gets over the glove and he cracks him and it wobbles him. Uh, and you know, why listen to me talk about it uh, when we could just watch it? Huh? Uh, and I have it queued up almost. <laughs> uh, uh, right Genevieve, our says Haggerty split through his guard the whole first round, even though he had the big gloves on. Yeah. That's, that's what was surprising. Cause I was hoping this was going to be in, a, in four ounce gloves, right? But the, because it's kickboxing, they got big gloves. Big gloves, you can kind of hide behind a little bit, and you're, mm-hmm. you can be more defensively responsible because they're big gloves. Um, mm-hmm. But it didn't matter, dude. Haggerty's throwing that two straight down the middle, the one, two, the jab, and then the cross right through, and it's literally splitting it every single time. It was crazy. Um, but here is the moment of that kick. So watch Haggerty on the right here. Oh, you can't see my cursor when I share it. That kind of sucks. Um, Haggerty's on the right. He reaches forward like he's going to throw that knee. It's a pump fake. Like he feints it, and mm-hmm. then he brings the leg down, and then he throws it for the high kick. It was fucking sick. And we'll see the whole finishing sequence here. Oh, beautiful. Ooh, nice. And then from here, I got to respect Andrade because he's trying to throw back. But Haggerty is just on a war path, dude. Nothing's going to like – you're not going to affect him. I mean, just brutal. And – Andrade throws knees to the body really well, and I think that was his downfall here because, you know, he's throwing these knees and Haggerty's timing them, and he's off- catching while he's off balance. You'll see it a couple times here. Man, that straight punch is so brutal. There right. it is. Yeah, and again, he's, he's getting caught every time. <laughs> yeah, and then he drops him, and Andrade tried to get up too soon, I think, because once he fell back right there. Oh, I've been there, dude. He got a head rush. I yeah, know that. I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just w- once he's on that warpath, dude, it's just 
and and he talked about it in the post fight interview where when he fought Nongo, he hurt Nongo, uh, and when he saw that he was hurt, he was like, "I need to get him out now." And but he was like, "But Nongo kind of recovered a little bit." Uh, but when I hurt Andrade with the high kick, I thought about that. And it's like, dude, how are you thinking about this type of stuff in the moment? Like yeah. it's insane, right? Um, but he was like, I knew I had to just keep it on him. Um, and you can see he got caught. He got caught a couple times from mm-hmm. return punches from Andrade. Um, but once you're on that war path, dude, it's like nothing's going to affect you. It's just crazy, dude. Uh, you it's guys talk about this crazy. all the time, uh, you and Ramiro, but just the look of that, you know, ring uh, with mm-hmm. the darkened audience out there, it makes it look mm-hmm. so premium. The uh, so cool. the Lakers do that in, in Los Angeles that, where they play basketball. Mm-hmm. The crowd is darkened. Uh, oh, I really? think in Madison Square Garden as well. But it also reminds me, Will, I don't know if you ever played NBA Jam on the Super Nintendo, but I when did. you go up for a <laughs> giant dunk, you know, Michael <laughs> Jordan, not Michael Jordan because he wasn't in the game, but all the flashing lights would happen in the background. Oh, too. yeah. It kind of reminds you of that because you see some like little squares back there uh, in the <laughs> yeah. darkness. It looks so great. Yeah, Genevieve says, uh, and then the babyface killer got a six-month ban for the shit he pulled during the interview. Uh, yeah, Blen- and then Blunderbub says one of the best parts of the night was when Ramazanov uh, came in and Haggerty was like, get this clown out of here. Get this clown out of here. <laughs> uh, when I was sharing that right now, did you get audio? Yes, I was hearing. Okay, so let's just show this really quick. Um, so they do the confetti. They announce him the winner. They do the gold confetti. They give him the two bells. Muay Thai champion and... Uh, now kickboxing champion as well. Yeah, you gotta be the, the gold angel, right? Let's skip forward to the interview just a little bit. Haggerty, my friend got 52 pounds of gold. How you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. You know, better feeling. Just 50 pounds of a belt that he's just carrying right now. <laughs> so crazy, dude. So big. Why does he say it? Absolutely hey, where's Frank, dude? I know. See. Oh, here it is. You said you Fabrizio, I want your MMA belt. You know? You said you wanted my Muay Thai belt. I'm one new up. I'm coming for your MMA belt. The general This guy's got three health. Dude, dude if he goes to MMA fight. and fights him in MMA and then wins somehow, <laughs> and he's Muay Thai, it's just like stamp, kickboxing Muay Thai, but simultaneous, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, they're talking, they're doing their interview, and then what Genevieve and Blunderbub are referring to is, let's see, should be right here. Oh, Blunderbub says that fight goes the other way. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You've got two belts, but you know what? You also got... Two bonuses for one. Wow. Come on. <laughs> nice. Chuck from Chatri, Senior Tong, a hundred. Super sick. But then, the rain on the parade. Make some noise for your two sport. Wait a minute. <laughs> I won't say something. You see, <laughs> is this scared, the WWE? <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> don't try. Don't try. Don't try. Don't try. Don't try. <laughs> Alaverdi Ramazanov. You want to chat? Just tell me. Why you scared me? Just tell me. I mean, this guy's just trying to get a fight. We've seen him on Instagram calling out Liam Harrison. We've seen him call out everyone under the sun. I don't know how he got in this ring, but somebody get him out. <laughs> But somebody get him out. That's so funny. Uh, and then Chachi banned him for six months for entering the wow. ring without permission. Mm, dang. <laughs> Rest in peace, dude. Hilarious, dude. Where's he going to fight now? Yeah. Oh, well, he's six months. I mean, he'll come. They'll, they they might set this fight up. If he does want to go to MMA, like Blunderbub says, that fight probably goes the other way. I mean, I don't know what Haggerty's grappling looks like. Blunderbub says nobody's scared of Ramazanov. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, they were, they were kind of hinting at this already. Um, uh, they had a uh, Ty Rotolo who grappled for the, I think the welterweight inaugural welterweight grappling championship on this card in the co-main event. Mm-hmm. And backstage they were talking about, uh, they were asking him um, if he ever wants to train with Haggerty. And he's like, Oh hell yeah. I'd love to go to England and train and stuff. And they talked to Haggerty and he's like, dude, after this fight, if I win, I'm, I'm, I want to fight Fabricio De Andrade in MMA. So I would love to have Ty Rotolo come train and learn some jujitsu from him and stuff like that. And it's like, mm-hmm. Ooh, it's interesting. But I mean, let's be real. You can't, you can't learn uh, that much. Jimmy says that she's honestly really happy to see him banned. She's been worried that Chowdhury was telling people to play up the drama, but I guess not, because that's not cool. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope not, dude. Like, yeah, the last thing I want is uh, for one to turn into the next UFC in terms of drama. I don't need the drama. I just need the fights. And that's mm-hmm. what they've done so well. I am a little worried about that, too, because they're starting to get their own footing in America, right? With uh, the, this Prime uh, deal, the Amazon Prime deal and having these events. And they're at, they're on, they start at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So they're marketed towards the North American audience. I really hope that the fights do the talking themselves and they don't need this like bullshit hype drama stuff, the fake drama uh, to like garner the fan interest. Because I mean, when, when Romero, I, I, you, you know, it took me so long to get Romero to finally start watching these fights, mm-hmm. but he was always like, I don't know any of the fighters. I don't know any of them, but it's like, dude, if you watched, you know, I mean, I, I was telling him watch uh, YouTube Pro Hoska and, and Ryzen and he wouldn't, and he finally came to the, to the UFC and he finally watched him. He's like, this guy's awesome. It's the same thing. You didn't know him before the fight, mm-hmm. but you do after the fight, so you just give it a watch. You know, you will get to know these people, and you'll start to uh, you'll start to follow them and stuff. And Genevieve says yeah, the high yeah. level of sportsmanship is what made me fall in love uh, with one to begin with. Exactly, that's all you need. The product, yeah, but it's uh, you're. I agree with you. You know, but this American audience that you know we're a part I of, know. it's the same reason that they have a Netflix show, to, you know, about Formula One, so you can get to know the drivers and yeah. the inner connection, even though they're showing you last year's races when they do it then it kind of hooks <laughs> yeah. you into the races afterward they're trying to hook you with the drama yeah yeah you know i just unfortunately like you said like the wwe's like when when he first came in you're like what is this wwe mm-hmm. i don't like that vibe i mm-hmm. i like i do appreciate some of the the wwe like showmanship and promotion self-promotion stuff like that and we're going to get some of that in this next fight we're going to cover but it's different for me when it's this fake beef fake drama shit talking stuff if it's like self promotion and self-belief type stuff to almost to like a corny level i'm kind of okay with that but when it's when it's this fake drama trash talk fake fighting pushing people away like all that type of stuff doesn't do yeah, much dude, when they when they connect some chains to a coffin and drive off at someone's <laughs> dad's funeral <laughs> yeah. like the, i think the big show did <laughs> i'm out <laughs> <It's> really <laughs> yeah it happened it happened in the wwf in the 90s <laughs> okay gotcha i think i think I Xbox took it. big show's dad's coffin from the funeral <laughs> tied oh it to God, his limousine dude. and drove away or something like that <laughs> it, was, it was epic <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, that's it for this fight. Uh, I don't I don't think they'll do the MMA fight next. Um, they'll probably have Haggerty defend one of these belts in the meantime. Maybe they do it down the line. But with with when you when you mix in mixed martial arts, uh, or when you mix the martial arts with grappling, I mean, Andrade has been doing jujitsu his whole life. You know, uh, Haggerty can't do that in one training camp. Like he's just gonna get taken down and submitted mm. pretty quickly. Um, so maybe you build to that eventually. I don't know. Um, but it would be cool to see another three sport champ. Especially if it's uh, simultaneous, right? Uh, Blunderbub says Superlex says he wants Haggerty Muay Thai. Everybody's calling out Haggerty now. They're, they want to do the Rod Tang fight again uh, mm. for the third time. They like he's got opponents that they can, maybe, even this dude. Um, uh, God, I can't think of his name now. Uh, they this fight, their best kickboxer wasn't even in this fight. They made an MMA fighter fight a Muay Thai guy for the kickboxing belt, but they kind of sidelined one of their best kickboxers. I can't think of his name now. Um, so who knows what they do, but they might do that fight, make him defend the kickboxing belt. I doubt it, but they might. Uh, but we can move on. Like I said, Ty Rotolo, uh, he got the inaugural, um, um, I guess, middleweight? I thought it was welterweight. I think it was welterweight. Uh, Tapology might be wrong, but maybe I am. Um, he got the belt for grappling. Sexon fought. He got his 200th win on the card. Uh, just beat the brakes off my boy. Um since Mitt was on the card, he had a good good fight. Um, but we're skipping all the way down to my boy, a power oh, pickle. That's who I'm talking pickle? about, Akimoto. Thank you so much. I was like, it was on the tip of my tongue. Um, yeah, that fight, I don't think they're going to do it. I think they want Haggerty to have two belts in two different sports, maybe push for a third in another sport. I don't think they're going to risk him defending his kickboxing title. I just... Couldn't see them doing that, but I, I do want to see the fight. Um, uh, let's see. We're skipping a bunch of fights just for the sake of time. We're at 48 minutes. Um, we're going to my boy, Ben Tynan. And like I said, there's a little bit of pro wrestling kind of self-promotion here going on. Um, Kong, uh, Kong Ji Won, you know, guy hits hard as fuck. Hits like a truck. Crazy knockout power. Um, th- this is like what this fight right here is what Jaltona versus 
Derek Lewis should have been. It was actually good. It was actually fun to watch. Um, it's a wrestler. Uh, look at this guy. Come on. He looks like Charizard Macho tattoo. Randy yeah, he's, Savage, dude. <laughs> he's got the Charizard tattoo on his bicep, dude. Fucking sick. And then uh, in the one in the one chat, they were like, does anybody know anything about Ben Tynan? And I was like, I've been watching this guy because uh, he's been fighting an LFA. This is only his uh, fifth. Yeah, he was 4-0 going into this fight. Uh, his last three professional fights were in LFA, which I usually watch LFA just because those guys, if you can put together a couple wins, the other big organizations are about to pull you. That's like the feeder league, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I do like uh, Kangji Won, but I got to go with my boy that I've been watching. I've been watching him grow, you know, but he's a heavy wrestler. Um, and I was like, this is a big test. Uh, Genevieve says, I knew it was Charizard. Blunder didn't believe me. <laughs> um, I am a lot of Tim Horton. <laughs> yeah, he's Canadian. Uh, best comment in the chat. Uh, Power Pickle says, uh, King Kong uh, uh, really need to improve his ground game. Yeah. Um, it's tough, man. I mean, Tynan's like, he's such an accomplished wrestler and he walks out with a tuxedo muscle shirt. It reminded me of Talladega Nights, you know? Where he's like, I like Ramiro's my Ramiro's rolling to wear a... in his seat at the stand. Yeah. Kids' baseball games. He's like, <laughs> I like my, my Jesus to wear a tuxedo t shirt because, you know, it says, like, I'm formal, but I like to party. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he walks out with the tuxedo. I, I don't think I've ever seen the tuxedo, tuxedo muscle shirt. Well, do you it's know what t-shirt. a Canadian tuxedo is, dude? I do. Yeah, it's jean denim. jacket. Yeah, full <laughs> denim. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh let's see uh gonsco i hope i'm pronouncing that right says sorry i'm late the ufc main event really put me to sleep yeah we've moved on from that one it was a tough one terrible fight uh hey, but thank you for joining us the, please uh, hit yeah. that notification bell if we didn't say before <laughs> yeah and if you want to hear us shit on that fight like it puts you to sleep and you need to take out some revenge or something feel good about it go back and listen to us shit all over it um but ben tynan and like i said uh if you didn't see this ben tynan versus uh kong ji won was pretty much what Derek Lewis versus Jell Tenamita could have been with the wrestler versus the uh, the, the knockout artist. Um, so fight starts, and I was like, most likely they're going to swing and bang for a second, and as soon as uh, Kong Ji Won gets comfortable trading punches, he's going to shoot on him, and he didn't even do that. Just immediately shot a takedown on him. He's like, I'm not taking any risks. Uh, takes him down, uh, eventually mounts him, uh wasn't able to do too much damage in the first round on the off the top um but controlled him exhausted him matt returned him a couple times i think um second round starts kong ji won is trying to land shots and he is landing shots uh blender Rope says the only uh thing about one is that uh i didn't feel like i got a good read on tiny stand up yeah he didn't really have to show it right um he ate some shots he showed a, he showed a good chin i think uh, but he wasn't very offensive with his striking in this fight. It was more just takedowns, mat returns, things like that. Uh, but really good takedowns, dude. If, if he was uh, on him, he was getting them down. Power Puckle says that he's enjoying 1FC more than the UFC, but it's just the UFC time zone. It's killing yeah. him. Yeah, well, luckily... Even if, the international if, events, too, you know? Well, so, yeah. So, every Friday, one has one Friday fights now. It's in Lumpini Stadium in Thailand. Those start around 4 a.m.-ish uh, Pacific time. Um, and then, but now like once a month or so, they're doing these fight nights on Amazon prime. If you're in North America and those start 5 PM Pacific time. So if you could tune in for those, I'm not sure what time zone you're in, but, um, it seems like one of those might align with no matter where you are, uh, potentially. Um, but yeah, it's been doing a big, it's, it's been getting them a, a, a ton of audience lately. Uh, mm-hmm. and especially on a, on a, on a weekend like this, where, the one card, like Genevieve said, wasn't their best card, but it was still delivered some exciting moments. Um, but the UFC like shit the bed, and anytime they can do those types of matchups on a weekend, very good for one. Um, and uh, the Blundell replays, says, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, Friday fights—they're on YouTube. They live stream them on YouTube for free, so you can pretty much just check those out immediately whenever you can. And they're always bangers, just insane fights on those cards. Um, but back to Ben Tynan. I mean, slick takedowns. He ate some shots, showed, showed a good chin. Um, eventually started landing these elbows from Mount that were so gnarly. I don't know how, I mean, Kang Ji Won was just eating him, right? He just couldn't get up. Um, and eventually he gets the mounted arm triangle, I believe. Um, and he's got a few wins by mounted or by arm triangle. 
Uh, and he definitely uh, is a specialist, I would say. Um, and actually, since, now that we have this picture of the, the mounted arm triangle, I have um, a video that I'm going to yeah, share. Yeah, let's see it. This is only a cl- it's short clips of a couple elbows that he lands and then the finish of the fight. Uh, but listen to these elbows. I need one big elbow. Oh, oh, my God. See how red and purple that Kanji Wan is turning, right? But he's really got to jump to the other side. There he is. Got him. Brutal, dude. Brutal. Those elbows, man. And you hear him like clack on somebody, and it's just like, and you see their head bounce off the mat too. So gnarly. But yeah, he he looks phenomenal. Um, like Blunderbub said, we didn't really get to see any like offensive striking from him. But I don't think at this stage, you know, four and zero in his career. Um, yeah, so sick, dude. Um, but four and zero in your career, you're fighting a knockout artist, and you're a wrestler. Do you even take the chance? No, you know? no, it's not worth it. You can yeah, show off your skills at another in another bout. Yeah, keep developing those. You don't need to test them. They give him the uh, they, they announce him as the winner, right? Is that um, Herb Dean, dude? Is that my guy? Herb Dean, man. That's Why Herb is he Dean? everywhere? I thought he was just, you know, like <laughs> is he also an LFA? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's ever seen him at LFA. I wouldn't be surprised though. Um, but there was another video too. Maybe I don't have it queued up, but. Um, or maybe it was just a picture. The next picture is well, him tears ripping off his, his shirt off. Yeah. Look at Dom Lau back there, dude, just cracking up <laughs> and ripping his shirt off. Um, this guy uh, is one to watch. No pun intended. Uh, one one championship, I, I've always said, has. Um, I don't think they need the drama to sell North American audience. I think they need the time slot. Um, like Power Pickle said, it's the time zone's rough. It's not as rough anymore now that they have these events once a month um that's a big thing they checked off the other thing is they need to sign north american talent um they already have mm-hmm. you know some of these guys super leg broad tang uh super bond like all these guys nongo uh that are killers that the north american audience aren't necessarily familiar with probably the best way is to start matching them up with people that the north american audience are familiar with and so if they're signing guys from canada signing guys from america and they're mixing this stuff in um that is going to be key i think um, they should, they should have grabbed Ngannou, dude, when they could. <laughs> they tried. Mm-hmm. They had a they had a meeting with him. Um, but you know, signing guys out of LFA, signing prospects, American prospects or North American prospects, is such a big step in the right direction. I think for one to start growing a global roster, um, and I think that's a big move. Um, and this guy, he can talk the shit uh, like about himself. He's he's a he's a hype man, right? Like the interview was hilarious. He's a he's a hilarious guy, uh, and he's got a nasty skill set and he's a heavyweight one's heavyweight division is kind of lacking that's always been a big criticism is they don't have a big roster of the upper weight classes fill it out with guys like this get him against rug rug get him against buchecha you know like some of these guys they have their fun matchups fun grappling matchups genevieve is still mad about the dirty buchecha fight (laughs) yeah that was crazy dude so much cheating in that fight dude it was (laughs) insane dude it was insane uh what do you think about Um, ganskow saying that he thinks that one should have purchased Bellator instead of PFO. Um, yeah, I think uh, here's the tricky thing with, with the Bellator purchase PFL. It's pre- it, they haven't like done an official announcement for some reason yet, but it's pretty much confirmed now that um, that PFL bought Bellator and what they're doing is they're going to continue Bellator operating as its own entity for the next year or two. Um, and I think the reason for that is, I don't know if they were able to purchase like the contracts of the fighters or something like that, or if it's broadcasting rights, if there's TV deals involved that they can't break. Um, mm-hmm. So they have to continue showing Bellator fights. And then once that's done, I'm assuming they absorb the roster, which is massive for PFL. And that goes back to my point. There's a lot of North American fighters in Bellator. If one could have absorbed some of that roster, it would have been a big deal. But I think the silver lining of them not purchasing PFL or Bellator is after this year or two runs out, some of those fighters are going to finish out their contracts. Um, so there's going to be a lot of free up. agents. There's mm-hmm. going to be a lot of free agents. So they can almost pick and choose and negotiate with the guys they want rather than absorbing a whole roster. Um, so it, it could work out still. It's just going to time will tell. Um, but big things on the horizon. It, ben Tynan, though, man, I'm uh, fully on board. I know he's only 5-0, and oh, but uh, so far what I've seen, the guy's a killer. This is now his fifth fight. I think five finishes. It's crazy. Uh, Gonskow, we got some bonuses, right? 
yeah, bonuses uh, for the card. Um, ben Tynan got one. Uh, Christina Morales got one. Uh, we're not going to cover that fight, but she, I don't know what the hell happened. Um, she, it was crazy, dude. She like, she comes out. Um, <clears throat> she's fighting a uh, Supergirl, I believe. Um, yeah, she's fighting Supergirl and Supergirl to kill her, right? She fought Stamp. Uh, arguably, um, arguably won the Stamp fight. A lot of people thought she won. Um, but Morales goes out and just starts throwing. I mean, similar to after Haggerty uh, landed that high kick, you saw how he was just walking him down, throwing whatever he wanted. That's kind of what Morales did the entire fight. Supergirl was just either concussed immediately or maybe she came in sick or something. I don't know what. It was kind of bizarre. She just didn't look like she was in the fight. Morales just picked her apart and just ended up getting the finish. Um, and then uh, Tyra Cholo got one for winning the inaugural grappling belt. Haggerty gets a double bonus for uh, knocking out Andrade. Uh, Genevieve says Supergirl was sick. Interesting. That it seemed like there was something off. Um, oh, I thought it was Supergirl was sick. Like, so I guess she was ill. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then Ben Tynan gets a bonus. I think Ben Tynan, dude, the Charizard tattoo. He's got the Pit Viper shades. He's got the Tito <laughs> T-shirt. He's he's finishing all all of his fights. He's finished this. I think this guy is someone that one needs to put some eggs into his basket i think they got to get him a full canadian tuxedo like for the next walk dude if he walks out full <laughs> denim dude oh my god that'd be awesome uh but yeah that's that's it um that's it for the one card that we're gonna cover hey everybody Ramiro and will here thank you so much for watching that short clip it's just a small clip of what we covered this last sunday yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It goes a long way. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.